good day for music videos. Cole just dropped a new music video. Let's check it out and see if there's anything I can break down. Ooh. Yeah, kind of like that ASAP vibe. Okay, yeah, definitely. Nice. That's something we can definitely break down, like some seamless transitions, some match cuts. I think we can also do the, the color where it's just kind of only showing one color like yellow. I think it's really cool that Cole's been experimenting with his style more recently. I feel like you can't really know what you're gonna expect in the video now. I think it has something to do with the album coming up, but the last two videos had like those paper effects and then this video had like some clean match cuts and seamless transitions and some 3D. So it's just always evolving and I think that makes it more fun to go ahead and watch a new video when Lyrical Lemonade drops. Also, it looks like all the match cuts were done by Good Dylan. So definitely go follow him on Instagram. I've been breaking down his stuff in the last few videos. So he definitely deserves it. Super underrated editor. Yeah, I'll have his Instagram link down in the description. Okay, so now into the studio. And this is the sequence we're gonna be breaking down the match cuts and then also like this animated video like that. Okay, let's break this down. I haven't opened up After Effects yet today. So let's start off with the easiest of the effects kind of warm up and then get into the more advanced effects. So the first thing we're breaking down is this match cut and the building kind of going up. It looks really, really impressive, but it's actually such a simple effect. You're gonna be blown away by how easy it is to make it look like this aesthetic. It's actually pretty much just moving the position of the clip. So let's break that down. In After Effects, I have the stock footage of this building in New York pulled up. Basically, whatever you wanna match cut, if you wanna do like street signs, just get multiple different street signs. If you wanna get windows like this, you just need a building with a bunch of windows. In the actual music video they did, I'm pretty sure they panned up the video. As you can see in this one, it's kind of just a stagnant shot. There's a little bit of motion to it, but that's it and we can still get a really cool look. But if you do want to make these effects a little bit more custom and fit your video the best, I would definitely recommend not using stock footage and actually going out and shooting with the intent for your music video or for whatever you're doing. With this first effect, you can get away with using stock footage a lot easier than that second match cut with the circles but you can still go ahead and do it. I would just always plan with the intent of actually shooting the content for your video instead of using images and videos offline. So to get started, we want to pan from the bottom to the top of this building, just using match cuts lining up with the window. So the easiest way to do that is actually just go to this little button right here, turn on the proportional grid and pick one of the areas where the lines intersect. You can do it in the dead center, you can do it off to the right. For us, let's just do it dead center. It's gonna work the best for our footage. Let's go all the way down to this bottom window right here. You can see the grid is lined up with the bottom left of the window. You can choose any spot to line up. Just make sure you consistently do it throughout. So if we choose the bottom center, just make sure when we go back up to the next one, we're lining up with the bottom center. For us, bottom left is really easy. It still looks dead center in the video and you won't really be able to tell. And to get that more shutter style effect, the easiest way to do that is actually just go one, two frames forward, split it, click, Drag your video up, one, two frames forward, split it, go up. And like, as you can see, you can pretty much do this in any video editing software. There's no real need to be in After Effects. So all I'm gonna do not to bore you guys is go one, two frames forward. You can choose however long of a hold you want. In the Lyrical Lemonade video, they did like roughly two frames it looked like. Split the clip, go up to the next window, or if you're doing a match cut between street signs or literally anything, basketballs, you can do this match cut with anything and just choose different clips. For this example, it's all in the same exact clip because you're just matching to different windows. But if you were like walking down the street and every single time you saw a trash can, you took a video of that and just wanted a match cut, you would do one video of the trash can, go two frames forward, cut it, introduce the new video of the trash can, match cut it so it actually lines up properly, and then just so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and do this till I get all the way to the top and you guys will see. Okay, I take that back. That effect's a little harder than I thought just because of like how like straining it is to like focus on which window you're on at the time. So like, I feel like I kept on like messing up. I was like, wasn't moving properly per frame, but it's just like doing that over and over again is actually kind of hard, which is weird. But this is what I ended up coming up with. You can see I had it go up like this and then actually just wanted to show you that you can get creative with it and have it go back down if you want. And it kind of just because I'm in After Effects like that, it's just gonna loop forever. Another thing I found is the more zoomed in to the clip you are, the better it looks. Originally, I was a lot more zoomed out and it didn't feel like it was like moving up as much. And even now, I think I could have zoomed in more so it has more of that feeling of like ticking up each time. Um, so if I were to redo it, that's what I would do just to kind of give you guys advice 
on how to make it better. I would have like the primary focus of your window take up a majority of the scene. And in the original video, you can kind of see how that's the case. It's more of like a bigger jump each time because the windows are taking up more of the screen. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six windows. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Even if I were to just show you that by zooming in on a pre-comp like this, it's gonna lose a lot of quality and that's why it's best to shoot your own footage. This was actually a vertical video that I just zoomed in crazy big to, but you can see how this has a little bit more of like that similar style now that we're more zoomed in. So just keep that in mind when you're shooting for the effect and actually editing it as well. And then if you wanna get a similar aesthetic to the video, I just added on add grain and then also desaturated the footage. And now you have the effect that looks something like this. Now for this next transition where it's that circle match cut where it's spinning between the watch, the bike, the pasta, pop can, wheel, all that stuff. It's best if you shoot your own footage. I went ahead and went on Google and just found images of bikes, pasta, pop can, wheel, all that stuff just off Google images. But there's gonna be a slight issue that I'm gonna run into that hopefully if you shoot your own footage, you won't have to. If you do go ahead and shoot, just make sure to shoot your subject, whatever the circle thing is, dead center in your camera and at the same exact angle. So ideally you kind of have your camera and then object flat like this so they're both parallel. If you kind of start tilting your camera like that, you can do that, but the circle won't like be perfectly circular in the frame. So if you're like perfectly parallel straight on at the exact height of the dead center of the circle, that's where it's gonna look the best. You'll see in the transition that I do, I'll run into a few minor issues that we can fix but just knowing if you're gonna shoot it, might as well shoot it the best way possible. That way it looks the best for you. So we wanna transition from a watch to a bike. So on that last frame of your first clip, go ahead and split it, then go up to the ellipse tool. While selected on that last frame layer, go ahead and draw a circle. If you hold shift, you can make it a perfect circle. Like I said, a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be dealing with isn't a perfect circle. And then go ahead and turn that mask to none. That's at least how I like to do it. That way, you can play around with the mask, drag it into the right spot. If you hold shift, you can kind of get control of these each individual areas. So you can get the best possible mask around your circle and then turn it to add. So for the sake of tutorial, this is a good enough mask. The more time you spend making it the perfect mask, the better the effect's gonna look. Just know that in the tutorial, the circle might not be perfect, but it's the exact same concept. So now we wanna figure out what we wanna transition into. And for us, it's this bike. So like I was saying, the dead center focus of this photo is actually like right here. When ideally, if you were shooting it yourself, the dead center focus would be right here. So you'd actually just like have it look like this. So to fix that, because we have some checkerboard or black bars on the side, we're gonna drag on motion tile right now and change the output width and height to 200, 200. If you need to do more, you can. Hopefully you shot in a way where it doesn't need this. And then now you can see it does have the reflection of the bike, but when we go ahead and add motion and stuff, it will hide it pretty well. So now let's go ahead and just scale up our footage so that the watch fits inside of the bike circle. And because our footage isn't like dead center, this isn't a perfect circle. So you can see on the sides it's touching, but on the top and bottom it's not. So if you unlink the scale, if you're running into this issue, hopefully you're not, you can kind of change the scale like perspective of the footage like that. So now we have our clip inside of the wheel. If you see, if we go to rotate, it's not gonna be rotating from the right spot. So if we go to the anchor point tool, drag that dead center and put it right in the center of the clock. You can now see if we go to rotate, it'll rotate around this pretty well. So the common theme in this effect is it's always gonna have a video clip, a mask layer, and then below it, the next video layer, a mask layer, and then there's gonna be, we're gonna introduce a video layer behind here once we mask it. So let's go ahead and use the ellipse tool and mask like this. And for this mask layer, you can turn off the motion tile because you don't really need it. It'll look weird once you have the rotation. And then go ahead and introduce your next circle clip. And for us, it's going to be the sign. So let's go ahead and scale it properly. I think it looks best if you kind of leave like a little bit of the border on the side, kind of showcasing what is going into. And let's go ahead and drag on our motion tile, mirror those edges, turn up the values. And we probably need to change the portion scale too. That way it just fits a little bit better. And then it's just the same process, however many times you want to go ahead and do it. So again, ellipse tool on a split layer like this, make the mask proper. So now you can see it kind of starts to have the transition. Watch the bike, bike to sign, and then sign to that pop can. This one's really satisfying. I feel like it just like fits properly. And then lastly, we want the watch to go over this. So actually on the last clip, if you want to transition into a final clip, you want the clip it's transitioning into be over the clip to the left of it. Because before the clip to the left was always over the clip to the right. But now the clip to the right is going to be over the clip to the left. Hopefully that makes sense. I think you'll see kind of like when you start to make the transition yourself. And let's go ahead and just make sure this is proper. Go ahead and make sure that you have the anchor points all in the center. Sometimes 
I forget to do that. Figured I'd mention that because that will mess up your transition if you don't have the anchor point in the center. And now you want to pre-compose these two corresponding clips. So overall clip of the watch with a watch mask clip. So go ahead and pre-compose those and do it for all of them. So now we have the first watch, the bike, the sign, the can, the wheel, the pasta, and the second watch. So we play that it's starting to look a lot more like that transition. So now let's go ahead and add some rotate to each individual layer, and then we can go through and rotate the whole entire composition. I just went ahead and made everything black and white so it kind of matches the aesthetic of the video. It'll help with a match cut. If you like match the colors and stuff too, that actually does really help. Even just that slight little change, it's getting there. Bring up rotation by pressing R, keyframing at the beginning to zero. And I think if we just rotate each thing like 25 to 30, it'll look pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the issue I have because I use stock images that weren't like dead center and framed properly, I have to add motion tile on these rotate clips again. So it's gonna look a little weird. It's not gonna look terrible, but ideally you only have to add motion tile to this part right here and not to the beginning. That is just something now we have to go ahead and do. So you can see it will fill out each one of these rotations. Once you add motion blur and stuff, it will hide it, but it does look better if you don't have to do motion tile twice. You can see we're starting to get there. Some clips are spinning a little faster than others. I think overall, we could probably do a little bit more just intense of the spin on each. So like, let's bring it up to like 35, 40 for each of these. And it's gonna be dependent on your clips and everything. So keep that in mind. There's a lot better rotation here. And one thing we can do is now turn on motion blur, make sure it's enabled up here, and then go ahead and turn it on for each one of these layers. And now, it's looking a lot better. And if you wanna change the motion blur amount, if you go to composition settings and then advanced, the higher you change the shutter angle, you'll see it'll refresh here, the more intense the motion blur is. I think anywhere from like 180 to 360 is probably gonna be like the best it's going to look. But for example, if we do 720, you can see how intense the motion blur actually is. I think I'm gonna leave it at 360. And now let's go ahead and pre-compose everything. Go to the beginning of the transition, keyframe some rotation, go to the end and keyframe some rotation as well. Add that motion blur on. And one last time, some motion tile. This is ideally why you don't have to do it originally because it's going to look weird the more motion tile you have on, but I'll show you what it looks like. And to hide a little bit of it, you can add some scale throughout the transition. And just like that, we have our transition. Obviously it looks a little weird with all this motion tile going on around the edges. And that's why if you actually go ahead and have your own footage and shoot with something in the dead center and give enough room around the edges, the better it's gonna look. And then also just how clean the background is. You can see this car scene is a lot cleaner looking than this scene with pasta because it's duplicating everything around the edges of the scene versus like something like the sign also looks pretty clean because you're only seeing like replication like around here but like with the pasta, you're seeing it like here, here, like it just looks a lot weirder. So keep that in mind when you're shooting your clips, I think that'll help out a lot. That's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like. If you're not subscribed, be sure to do that because 50% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed. I'll have a new video for you guys next week. Peace.